All right, we're back with our man Brian once again. Check out his podcast, First Team, Second String. We're back with AFC win totals. Uh, Let's just get this started. Let's start off with the AFC East. The Bills are a solid favorite at minus 150 uh, to win the division, and the Dolphins and Pats are tied at plus 350. And then my sweet Zach Wilson with the Jets are at plus 2,500. Let's start off with the Bills. Their win total is at 11. Okay, so... I think this is an easy over, right? Bills over 11. Josh Allen is a top three QB. Uh, He was electric last season. They're top seven in almost every advanced metric offensively last season. Like like seven was their average if you looked at it. Uh, And I just think they're – I just that's what I think. I think hammer the over. I think that's an easy over. I'm going to have to agree with that. 11 wins might seem like a lot, but especially with the extra week, I think they can easily surpass that mark. They added Emmanuel Sanders. Cole Beasley's coming off a career best, 82 catches. You know, he might not be with the team the full season. He's been been going crazy on social media. But he came off career best, 82 catch season last year. There's a little tight end uncertainty with Dawson Knox. Maybe breakout year, who knows. But I still think they get the over 11. No problem. Yeah, it seems pretty easy. I mean, unless they have a vaccination problem. They're one of the lower vaccination rates in the league, right? I think so. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I mean. I'm in the football team. Yeah, so if you – I mean, you're not going to lose money putting your money on Sean McDermott. And Josh Allen, I think he's going to MV- and win MVP this year. Not MVP, that's Mitch's trophy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, I like Josh Allen at, I think it's 11-1 to 1 or 12-1 to 1 to win MVP. Really? Yeah, if they, if so. they win, like, 13 games, I could see that, or 14. I think, I thought he was maybe 13-1, to 1, but I think you're right. Like, 12-1 to 1 or 13-1. to 1. And also, just to piggyback on the Cole Beasley thing, it, I, even even though he's been crazy on social media, I still see him as a rapper first. That's still always what comes <laughs> to mind first is that he's a rapper, an anti-vaxxer, and a wide receiver, but also a short king. So you know what are you what are you gonna do? It's fair. I, I do mean, have he, more. I'm so good, Connor. I was gonna say just one more point about the Bills. Does Devin Singletary have a good year this year? Because like it's hard for me to see him being consistent. He was terrible in the playoffs last year. I think it's the ball a ton, but still. Yeah, the run game worries me. I agree. Josh Allen's like their best rusher, arguably. Yeah. You know the, Maybe Zach Moss. Ahead. Yeah. I, I just, I, I just, they're just such a modern football team. They're, they're run so well. They pass early on first down. They pass on second down. They just, they, they have a lot of pre motion. Uh, they have a lot of play action. They're just a really modern, uh, uh, like a, a a well-run modern football team with McDermott and uh, what's his name? Bal- I, why can't I remember his name? Bill Balwell? Bill Balowell? B-O-C? Whatever his name is, he he's he's phenomenal. He's so good. And they're just a really well-run football team. All right, so all of us are on the over on that one. I also like the Bills to win the Super Bowl this year. If you're going to bet on someone outside of the Chiefs or the Buccaneers, I think the Bills are the best bet. I believe their odds are, I think they are 12 to 1 to win it. Yeah, they're 12, they're 12 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I can get behind that. I, 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 that's not a long shot to me. No, I mean, they were one game away from the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, I think that's a great bet with everything that we just said. I think yeah, the only thing that worries me is the run game and then the vaccinate, vaccination stuff with COVID. I wouldn't be surprised if they had two forfeits this year. So. Yeah, that's gonna be weird. That's gonna suck. Just give us Tuesday football again. Honestly, I love Tuesday football. Like I'm gonna... fine watching Kendall Hinton play on the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. So I remember a one day. It was like a Wednesday. There was a Wednesday game. I think it was the Raven Steelers on a Wednesday. Yeah, I that was, was a RG three. Yeah, I was just jacked. I was like, <laughs> all right, yeah, football every day this week. Oh, this is everything <laughs> I wanted. My dreams have come true. Oh, but we have the Mac to help us out with that one. True. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to the Miami Dolphins. Their over-under win total is nine. The over is minus 143. The under is plus 118. I'll start this one off. Their defense is awesome. Their wide receivers are pretty fun. But their O-line stinks and Tua stinks. I think Tua's going to be a little inconsistent this year. I, I just – I mean, he showed flashes last year, sure. But I personally never understood, like, the Fitzpatrick benching. I mean, they were doing okay. I get wanting to, like, speed up the process a little more. But at the time, I felt like he was playing better. So, I don't know. I couldn't agree more with that take, Connor, because I I was watching it. It was full disclosure. So Brian Flores, he's Honduran. I'm Honduran. So he's like my guy. 
So I, I watch as many, uh, I call it the Brian Flores football team. I call it, I watch as many Brian Flores football team games as possible. And I remember in, in, and I was watching that. I was like, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is the guy to keep uh, throughout the season. I didn't understand the move. I thought it was like, uh, I thought it was too quick to make. I, 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 if I, I'm like I said, I'm Honduran. So it's, it's basically impossible for me to not pick over. But yeah. if I was in Honduran, I would say I would lean under because I think um, it, it's just – I don't know if the team is it, it, offensively with uh, Tua and, and the offensive line is talented enough. But because I said over, I do have a stat for you guys. From week 7 to week 15, they're at home every game except one, which is week 8 against the Bills. From that point on, they're – at home basically for the next seven weeks. And in that stretch, the past defense efficiency efficiency rankings are bills at 15 Texans at 29 Ravens at 16 jets at 28, 23, the Panthers, 24 giants and 28 jets. So below average teams that they're facing. So I feel like if they can do it, that, that that's, I feel like they can do it. So I, I will say over because of that, that that's an interesting stat. That's kind of pushing me the other way. Now I wrote down under initially, I wrote down maybe a push. I could see them winning nine games on the dot, but I wrote down under to start off. They, I mean, they got Malcolm Brown this year. He should do a pretty good job as the second tailback. Will Fuller coming back from suspension. They got some weapons, Jalen Waddle. But I did have an interesting bet for y'all on this one. Tua is plus 1,600 to throw the most picks in the league this year. I don't think that's insane. I don't know if they'll throw it enough for that. That, and then I oh. would not be surprised how quickly we see Jacoby Brissett. You think? I don't. I think they'll yes. give Tua a long leash. I really think they, they th- But the thing is, Tua was their franchise guy that they drafted. They finally brought him in for Fitzpatrick, even though Fitzpatrick was winning games. And then they benched Tua again. Yeah, that is true. And plus, the I Dolphins have the 27th strength of schedule out of the league. So, And I don't know. I don't know how many – beat writers uh of the of the brian flores football team it's funny calling it the brian flores football <laughs> team with, like with people that like don't know that i call it the brian flores football team in like seriousness but i don't know how many people f- follow the dolphins or, or or beach writers or anything but we're not hearing like we are hearing how great mac jones is we're hearing how great trey lance is we're hearing how great justin fields is we're not hearing how great tua Tua is and i think that's concerning and like that's just that's just top. That's just not good. And 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 we saw him play last season, and it wasn't great. And granted, he had the hip injury. I just don't know. I don't know about the dude. I think it's a really tough bet. Yeah, I'm gonna go under on this one for sure. I'm sticking. I'm sticking under as well. Yeah, even though they ha- they play you if you, there's two divisions you want to play against, they get to play the NFC South, which isn't great, and then they get to play the AFC South, which stinks. So, I mean, they could easily just walk away with five wins from that alone. That's true. Fair point. But, and then the Jets should be a, a, I mean, they should be a boxing bag for, a punching bag for the rest of the division. Even though I love Zach Wilson, but uh, yeah, Connor, you're under. Brian, you're over. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to all the Hondurans everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Yeah. I. There's like two. Well, I think we're going to see Jacoby Brissett by week six. Yes, I do. Just to, just one last. I think Jacoby Brissett is completely underrated. I think he just got really unlucky with the Colts because they paid him because they he thought he was the going to be the guy. And he's a good, decent player. And I, I think we'll see Jacoby Brissett if uh, before week 16. I mean, I don't if we do see Jacoby Brissett before week 16. I mean, this is it's a wrap for Tua. It's a wrap. Like they'll trade him. They'll come. Yeah, him, it'll be him. a little Josh Rosany. But uh, all right, let's do the Patriots. They're over under win totals nine. The over is minus 150. The under is plus 123. I don't know if that over is being juiced just because it's on the Barstool Sportsbook, but Cam's fully healthy again, <laughs> even after COVID. And uh, we've never, we've every offseason, we've been told Cam's healthy again, but who knows what to believe. So I saw on the timeline today all these Mac Jones hype tweets. I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I mean, I feel like Cam Newton will start week one, but. I, you know, I love Cam Newton. I'm a big Cam Newton guy, but Mac Jones could come in sooner rather than later. Uh, so I'm, I'm big on Mac Jones. I, I'm hammering the shit out of this over. I think they're going to, I think they're going to win 11. Um, the, the roster is dramatically different from last year. When you consider all the opt-outs are back, free agent signings and the injuries. 
You had Hunter Henry, Judon, Hightower, and Van Noy come back. Um, they won seven games with a shitty roster. They won seven games, and they were competing in those games. And Cam Newton was playing the worst uh, he's ever played in his whole career. And as a Cam guy, I think we're all Cam guys. I don't know if we're all Cam guys, but as a Cam guy, yeah. that sounds really weird. <laughs> as a Cam guy, but as a Cam Newton guy, I'm I'm a like I'm a big fan, and and I think he's gotten a lot better and. Uh, you can see the improvement in his foot and, and the way he, he's throwing the ball. I don't know if he's – I do think both of them are going to play. And I just want to say this one last thing. Mac was 35 of 40, 18 straight completions, and a 50-yard bomb to Jacoby Myers in double coverage in a two-minute drill against ones with an, against New York Giants in a joint practice. That's, that's huge. I think that's, that's yeah. huge. And – to kind of like banking off what you just said, no matter who's no matter who's a quarterback for every week, Cam Newton or Mac Jones, I think their best friends are going to be Hunter Henry and Johnny Smith, the two new tight ends that came in. And one more point I'm interested in on like on this season for the Patriots is I really do think if Mac Jones comes in and comes in and starts eventually, Nelson Aguilar, I think, will have a great chance to have a pretty great year. I didn't understand the Aguilar signing. He's their, I mean, he's their wide receiver one apparently right now over I, th- I think it'll be Myers. I don't know. I mean, he was okay last year. But I guess it won't matter because that's my point is I feel like it's going to be like how Cam was in Carolina. Ben Mintz mentioned this on whatever show. He said Cam Newton always throws high. That's why Greg Olson was his favorite target. And they'll be running two tight end sets. That's Bill Belichick's favorite thing. Belichick also just saw Brady win a Super Bowl in Tampa. I think they're not going to be going for a draft pick this year. I think they're going to be going for 10-11 wins, like you said, Brian. Yeah, I really do think that they're gonna they're gonna do it. They're just and and like I said, I really do think that they're both gonna play. I think you're gonna see a lot of Mac Jones and and because Cam Newton is is gonna be a disadvantage. It's eleven on eleven, you know. If you have Cam Newton there, it's gonna be eleven on eleven, and Mac Jones really really can't play. So we're all going over here. Is that what I'm here? Yeah, it seems easy. Okay. I think they're easily a ten win team, especially with their schedule too. They don't play anybody hard really, what? other than other than the Bills. Yeah. And I the hate Buccaneers. The can't stand Belichick. Can't stand <laughs> the Patriots. Can't stand Tom Brady. But you know my, the the past gambler in me is saying over here, dude. I <laughs> I love. How do you not love a guy that will stand up at noon for the for the national anthem? That's so crazy. That's such a crazy thing. Whenever he goes to Annapolis, the national anthem plays at a restaurant. He stands up. I just I, I've never been a Patriots guy ever since I was little. I, don't know, I can't get behind it. Nothing wrong with it. Hey, they're but. They're good, so there's no other way around it. Yeah. And they finally have a ton of opt-outs coming in from last I think year. I'll have a good, great season. All right, let's move on to my uh, my sweet Zach Wilson and the New York Jets. They're over under win totals at six and a half. The under is being hammered at minus one sixty. The over is plus one thirty. I'm assuming that'll go down to six. Uh, Brian, what do you think? So they averaged fourteen points last year. And so it's just like you're not gonna win. Even 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 though they don't have like a shitty wide receiving core, their field goal kicker led them in scoring last year. Yeah, you got you got my dog Salah, and you add Lafleur, and Zach Wilson is obviously if you just watch him throw the football, it's he's he's one he's already I think one of the best throwers. Um, they're heading in the right direction, but I think you just got to go under. It's just it's too much. It's a that's a tough division for for the Jets. I'm going to have to agree with that. I went under here, under six and a half. No, I think it should drop to six, maybe even lower. But I'm a big Carolina guy, big Michael Carter guy. I'm not saying he'll be the RB1 to start out, but I think by the end of the year, he should be the most productive running back or at least one of the most productive players on the roster. Corey Davis was a pretty good signing. And another bull take I have for the Jets is, like, they have tied in Chris Herndon, who, like, has been a real disappointment the last few years out of Miami, I think. He's, like, he's really big, big guy. Supposed to be really good. I think it will be like a top twelve tight end this year. I have Zach Wilson and get him the ball because he just got a lot of raw talent. I think I had him on my face team a couple years ago, and he just never panned out. I can see it happening this year. I don't know. Kinda yeah, random. Zach Wilson loves his tight ends. I mean, Isaac Rex is probably the one of the highest rated tight ends in college football. I know your guys are like, who the hell is Isaac Rex? But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I do like the uh, the draft pick Elijah Moore. Uh, they finally got Vera Tucker on the O line. Uh, C.J. Mosley's coming back. But this team's not going to win seven games. I just don't see it. Seven, ten, seven and ten seems like a lot for this team. Even though I love Zach Wilson, I am terrified week one. That's my that was, that's my nightmare matchup because I want the Panthers to win, but I want I want to see Zach Wilson do well. 
and one or two is going to happen. He's going to either have that breakout performance and the media just goes crazy. He's the next Joe Namath. The Jets are back. The Jets are back. Or the next day, he's going to get slammed in some corny New York Post title that you see on ESPN. It's like, oh, Zach Wilson can't do it. But, yeah, I mean, I love the under here. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, just going off that week one matchup, it's not a long shot. Like, I love the Panthers, honestly, but Zach Wilson could shred us week one. You guys really think that Zach Wilson could shred you guys? Our secondary we, is sketchy. It's, it's suspect. We got some talent, but it's, it's unproven. I, I mean. You just <sighs> never know week one. And you Sam Darnold know. could just come out there and choke, honestly. But that's the thing. <laughs> Sam Darnold revenge game? Um, I don't, I don't, I just, I, I don't know. I just, the way, the I, I, I'm a stupid football guy. The way the <laughs> Panthers competed last season, I loved it. I like I fell in love with how hard the Panthers played. And so that's why I just don't I don't think but I also think you why can't the best of both worlds happen? Why can't Zach Wilson <laughs> shred you guys and and you guys still somehow win in a field goal kick? There's the best that's the best of both worlds, right? If yeah, but I just feel like one or two is gonna happen. I think it'll be you close. Know. I think it'll be a close game. Because we're four point Panthers minus four seems way too easy. At home. The fan in me wants to take that, but it, I, just, I could just see so many things going wrong. I've seen I'm so- not going to lie. I would take Jets plus four in that. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, you're going to give, if you're going to give the Panthers minus if four. If we get down to two and a half, then you're talking, I'm talking Panthers. Yeah. That's okay. a big shift. That you're calling for injuries to happen on the Panthers for that. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> no way it's moving point. a point and a half unless there's just people in Vegas that just know it's rigged or something. Or P.J. Walker comes in. Um, or Will Greer or Teddy Bridgewater comes back. All right, the, uh, so we all went under. All right, sweet. Yes. Let's move on to the AFC North. The Baltimore favorites are plus 120 favorites, and then the Browns are right behind them at plus 145. Let's start with the Ravens. Win total is at 10.5. Their over is being hammered at minus 167. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll just go. Uh, I don't know how – one, I'm realizing that I'm just having, I'm just in the AFC, I'm just all overs. But I think that this is a, Lamar Jackson is 30 and seven as a starter. The Ravens have won 10 games in eight of Harbaugh's 13 seasons. They have a great run game, they have a great defense. Uh, and I'll do my prop bet at the end. But I do, I do, I just think, I don't know how this doesn't hit over 10. And I don't know how they don't win 11 games. I'm going to have to agree with that. I also went with the over here. I think 10 and a half. Not necessarily low, but for the Ravens, I mean, they've always been a good regular season team with Lamar Jackson. They lost a couple of key guys on defense. Matthew Dudon left, but they got Sammy Watkins, Rashad Bateman in the first round. Gives Lamar some more weapons. I have an interesting prop bet here. Kind of a random one I just saw in the Barstool Sportsbook. It's Lamar Jackson over six and a half rushing touchdowns and Mark Andrews over eight and a half receiving touchdowns, plus 350. I think that's a lock. Mark Andrews always gets the ball in the end zone, especially with the other couple tight ends gone from a couple years ago. Lock, I think plus 350 is pretty pretty good for that because I think Lamar easily gets seven rushing touchdowns and nine receiving touchdowns from Mark Andrews is not insane. Yeah, the only thing that scares me about the Ravens this year is every time you watch Lamar Jackson, you're like, Ugh, when is he, when is he going to get hurt? Like, sounds awful to say, but you're just like, he runs and you're just like, he's not a big guy. You're just, you're just waiting for that one entry and just terrifying. But he's insane. John Harbaugh is one of the most consistent coaches in football. They add a little bit to their wide receiving core with Sammy Watkins, Rashad Bateman. I think it's an easy over. I don't know if they win the, win the division. I think the Browns are also going to be around there too. And the let's Ravens, just sorry, go on. I was just going to say real quick, the Ravens have the second hardest schedule. I know I brought this point up a lot for different teams. But they have the second hardest schedule in the league, and I still think they'll win 12 games. So I think that kind of speaks to, I don't know. They're just really good. They're just like yeah. we've all said, they're a really good football team. And then just for, I have the same prop bet. I also, uh, Andrew, uh, Andrews has the last two seasons, 10 and seven touchdowns. Well, the year that he scored seven touchdowns, he only played 14 games. So it's like, that's a, that's a lock over six and a half. That's a lock. I think yeah. just, plus money. That's a lock. All right, let's move on to the Browns at plus at 10 and a half wins. They're over is minus one Oh eight. The unders minus minus one thirteen. It feels like the Browns hype is at an all time high again, uh, which feels dangerous because, uh, it's never safe to have your money on the Browns. 
I agree. And I'm a huge Nick Chubb guy. I don't know why. I just like love watching him play the way he plays. Um, I got the over here, over 10 and a half. I also have the Browns to win the division. Obviously, I think the Ravens are going to be really good, but I think there's a better shot that the Browns win the division, in my eyes at least. I don't know. Odell's back. They had a pretty good draft with Greg Newsom. Jadion Clowney signed with them, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I think, I think they have a pretty well-rounded roster. A lot of weapons. And Joe Q's back. I think Baker Mayfield has a pretty good year. Isn't it crazy that this is the Browns? Like, the Browns have assembled one of the best, deepest rosters in the NFL. They have the best offensive line. They have the best running game. They have Jarvis Landry, uh, David Njoku, Odell Beckham. Uh, Baker Mayfield's not bad. I think I think people I, – I, I, Baker Mayfield's in this, like, weird area. By the way, shout out to Carter for using Feeling Dangerous. I saw that. It was great. <laughs> um, but it, it, he's in this weird area where people, I think, underrate him or – and he's just good enough. I think this team. I think this team could sneaky win the Super Bowl. I know it's crazy. But I, I think this is one of this is the last ranked team that could win the Super Bowl if they get hot and they could, and they have the easiest schedule. So, somehow I feel like everybody has the easiest schedule or the hardest schedule, but yeah. like the Browns can, are considered to have the easiest schedule. It's just one of those things where if everything falls into place and they get a run to the title, that's not that hard. Or like some like the Chiefs or somebody gets eliminated before they have to play them, it could happen. I could see that. Yeah, just think like a few years ago, they were using Hugh Jackson and Freddie Kitchens. Like, imagine, remember those hard knocks? Like, and now look where they are. We're like, yeah, they're Super Bowl contender, like legit Super Bowl contender. Kevin Stefanski's awesome. Like, he deserved yeah. coach of the year. They finally won a playoff game. It was the Steelers, but they were in that Chiefs game, even though Mahomes got hurt. I mean, they could have very easily won that game. So I love over 10 and a half. AFC seems like it's all overs. It just seems it does. I was thinking that when I wrote them down today. I don't know. But no, uh, I agree. yeah, I don't know if I like them, but plus 145 to win the division. I still think the Ravens are just 12 yeah. and five on just a lock at 12 and five, 11 and six. And I guess it'll probably come down to a tiebreaker between their head to head matchups or division record. But uh, let's do the Steelers win totals at eight and a half. The unders at minus 134, the overs plus 110, Brian. So I know the easy pick is under. I know that's the easy pick. But I went with over, and it's, and it's, cl- it's really close. I, I just think with the new offensive coordinator, it, it leads me to believe that they're going to play a more modern style of football, more motions, and more groupings. Uh, they're great on defense. They're one of the best. And they play some mediocre pass defenses and some mediocre run defenses. So I think they can legit go nine and eight, and which is weird to say, like here in 12 and five. I'm still not used to the extra uh, extra number. It throws me off completely. But I do think they're a nine and eight team. I was – this one's kind of pissed me off today, I'm not going to lie. I was researching it. <laughs> and I, I, I somehow stumbled onto these like – Oh, steel curtain or black and gold, whatever, like blogs or some website. I don't even know. They're the best. And the, well, these people were saying, oh, we have 11, Crazy. 12 wins this year. Yeah, my fucking ass, you have 11 or 12 wins. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm not a big Steelers guy. I, I don't hate them, but just 11 or 12 is crazy. I have the Crazy's under eight and a half. I can see them winning eight games. But yeah, I, I have the under. It's, I mean, it's never good to bet on Mike Tomlin to have a losing record, but. I, I think they, Big Ben's done. I hate Mason Rudolph. I hate Mason Rudolph. I hate Dwayne Haskins. I think they're all just terrible. They're all awful. They're O-line. They didn't do anything to improve it. Mm-mm. I agree. And plus, and none of them can move, really. This will be the last time I say this, because this is the last thing I had to down about this. They have, on the website, I have the number one hardest schedule in the league. They were the top of the list. <laughs> so, like, because the Ravens were number two. I guess the division is really good. I, I don't know. Ravens were number two, but the Steelers were number one. And everybody's talking about Big Ben this, Big Ben that. He's coming back. No, I think he's washed up. He's done. So you guys have completely convinced me to go under. But because <laughs> I was back and forth with it. But two, I love fan websites because <laughs> they're so crazy. To say that the Steelers are going to go 11 and 12 is criminal. Like we all saw that they were fraudulent, a fraudulent football team. They won 11 uh, straight games and did not win one more. They actually won one more. Well, they, they won one, one more. They went 12. Switch. But still, that's still that's still crazy <laughs> to win 11 straight games. because They, they lost the to the Bengals. It was Ryan Lindley, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. But you, 
But Big Ben, guys, he's lean though. Yeah, he's vegetarian, isn't he? He's two years too. Is it fake? Is it fake vegetarian? I could, yeah, beyond. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've never seen him this lean. I I'm worried. I I'm gonna be one of the people that says I'm worried that Big Ben is lean because that means there's gonna be less power because I know he doesn't lift weights, so he's just using all fat. That's my logic. Chill with the vegetarian slander, Carter. My girlfriend's vegetarian. Thank you very much. Are we leaving hey, that Connor, in there? Way to have your girlfriend's <laughs> back, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm sticking over on the podcast. There we go. No. Let her know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh no, I mean, when is ever going vegan or vegetarian work for someone besides Chris Paul in sports? Cade Cunningham is vegan, number one pick in the draft, I think. He's at Detroit, so like what is he gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway, in Detroit. You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the Bengals. They're over under win totals at six and a half. The unders at minus 122. The overs even money. The Bengals glaring problem this off or last season uh, was O-line and they had Petty Sewell in their lap and they said, nah, let's go Jamar Chase. So, uh, Brian, what do you think? So, one, I want like, – thank you for bringing that up because that's something that not enough people talk about. And they people during the draft thought it was just a slam dunk to to draft Jamar Chase over Penny Sewell, and I remember I, I'm a big believer in offensive line. I'm a big believer in inside out football when it comes to like starting a team after you have your quarterback. And they clearly had their quarterback. What they were asking Joe Burr to do in his rookie year, uh, it was a lot, and he was doing a really great job of it. And uh, and then you know he tore his ACL, right? So it's like. It, I just think that that was a huge mistake. And then Jamar Chase is not looking good in some of the things, but who knows what happens with that. But five straight years, they have gone under with their win totals. Five straight years. For, that's, a, that's a stat. Over the last five years, no team has a worse win rate in one score games in the Bengals. That's 24%. They're 9 of 39 in the last five years. That's incredible. And their offensive line still sucks. So there's no way that they're going to go over. And they're the only NFL team without an indoor practice facility. God, let's go. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go against the norm here. I put over six and a half for the Bengals. And also, to go on top of that, Bengals to finish third in the division is plus 400. I think they could beat the Steelers in the division. They're I don't high. hate that. Yeah, I don't hate that, actually. Because if we see Mason Rudolph, he's going to get clobbered with that bad off- offensive line. If the Bengals somehow get to eight games and the Steelers only win seven, I mean, that, that's not crazy. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll see Mason Rudolph, you know, another helmet thing with Miles Garrett. I'm hoping. That was awesome. By the way, I was thinking about that. Whenever I think uh, about that hit, I just think of uh, <laughs> Mason Rudolph going, you bitch. That's all you can hear him <laughs> say. <laughs> Mouth, it cracks me up every time I see the replay. I just hear him go, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't see how what they see in Mason Rudolph. Like, he's not good in any way. He's just he's, like, he's like Jimmy. Uh, like, he's literally, like I mentioned it yesterday, he's the great value. He's the Walmart version Jimmy Garoppolo. Is, is it possible? Because I'm a huge Tomlin guy. I love Mike Tomlin. Mm-hmm. Right? The standard is a standard. All the, sh- all the shit he says is awesome. Is it possible that he is just aging out even though he's still a young even though he's still a young coach he's not like an expert he's more of a manager uh he was supposed to be a defensive guy and i don't know how much of of the defense i mean obviously the defense is really great but just like the offensive coordinators he's had i and he's been there for 14 years i don't want him to go because i love mike tomlin but i just don't know if he's still the right guy for the job i think i think that's a hot take that's a, that's a quarter cast hot take right there. Yeah, that is a hot take. I still think he's the – I mean, who are you going to hire better than Tomlin? That's the only thing. Because if they hire somebody else and he sucks, they're, everybody's going to be like, you made like such a big mistake. Like, they're going to get – That's a fair point. But, I you mean – Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you just need to I, – I mean, he just – you just need to hire better t- – I mean, to, to draft Mason Rudolph and then to uh, take a flyer on Dwayne Haskins, I don't know. It just – you, it tells me that you don't have a plan or, I mean, just prepare to get somebody in free agency. Like, try to get your Kobe reset. Try to try. I don't know. You know, there's guys that are that a flyer on Dwayne Haskins. I just think that's stupid. 
oh, Carolina worked him out plenty of times last season. I was uh-huh. terrified they were going to be like, Dwayne Haskins is our guy. No. Oh, God. I hate it. I, I mean, I was like, I, I didn't understand that draft. Everyone was like, oh, Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins. Like, I can't believe they were picked over each other. It's like, I didn't see either of them being good. I mean, it's easy to say that now that they both aren't good. But, I mean, Daniel Jones, I never understood, even as a Duke fan. Yeah. That's fair. But, okay. uh, all right, so, let's move. We all, we, you went over, Connor. Yeah. Brian and I under. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Let's do. That's the problem. I'm, it's too easy for me with these like bottom division teams. I'm just like under. It's just it seems too easy. But it, I, I feel I like it happens level. every year. I just buy stuff a little bit, you know. It is. It is one of those things where you go. Well, it's. It has to be some change around here because. It pair. I mean, the Niners went six and ten one year, and then went thirteen and three the next year. You know, it. It happens. The Bills. It's happened, but I don't know. Like. The AFC is kind of deep. Yeah. When you break it down, they, they used to suck like three years ago. Now they're deep. Yeah. Um. Let's do the AFC South. The Titans are the favorites at around even money. The Colts were previously favored, but with all these weird offseason injuries, they're now plus 140. Uh, a lot of the books have their win total off, off of it, but let's start with the Titans. Win totals at nine and a half. Over under are both at minus 115, Brian. So I struggled with this division, specifically with the Titans and Colts, because I both think it's going to get – I think it's going to be really close for both of them. So it, it's it's literally the last point that's made for either team is is what's going to convince me. So, if you know, you could be like, well, Julio Jones. I'd be like, all right, I'll – Titans. But then you could be like, but Frank Reich. And I'd be like, all right, Colts. So for, for me, I, I think um, – I'm thinking over, and you just add Julio Jones – and they're a 10 win team easy because it's the AFC South. And I think they can go 10 and seven, you know, Connor. Yeah. So with the Titans here, nine and a half just seems a little bit low, honestly. So I went with the over here and I actually have the Titans to win the AFC championship is a long shot other than obviously like the, obviously the chiefs, but I don't think it would be crazy for the Titans to win the AFC. Their defense scares me. That's the issue. That is the thing. I also wrote that down. The defense has to be consistent for them to make a run. I don't care how easy – I don't care no matter what, Cardinals-Titans over 51 and a half is hitting week one. <laughs> I think – I might mean, be mistaken here. That, that game's just going to be all over red zone. Scott Hansen's just oh, going to yeah. be just calling that game basically. <laughs> Back in Glendale, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I wrote down those – I could be wrong here because plus 1,300 is AFC champs. I think is what the Titans are right now. I think that's decent value. If I had to pick a sleeper team in the AFC, I'd pick them. But I'm, I'm saying over. Yeah, I don't hate that. Um, I mean, the tight end position is a little shaky after losing John U. Smith, but they did get Josh Reynolds, who had some flashes on the Rams as like a, you know, everybody's going to be looking at Julio and A.J. Brown. He might make some plays. I don't know. Tannehill could be top five in passing touchdowns, though. Another bull take I wrote down. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. I just, their defense, I, don't believe it. Can Julio stay healthy for a season is a huge question too. Uh, I don't know. So Connor, you went over. Brian, did you go under over? I went over. I think it's an easy over. I do think it's an easy over. I can see them winning 11 games, 12 maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can't – like you see those names. You're like A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry, Julio Jones, and you're just like, oh, i got to go over. It's just and, crazy that Tannehill was, like, mediocre in Miami. And everybody's like, oh, he's done. Goes to Tennessee and, you know, gets them a couple playoff wins. That's crazy to me. I don't know. Adam Gase, dude. Yeah, Adam the Gase. Gase effect. Yeah, hopefully Darnold has the uh, – comes to Carolina, wins a Super Bowl this year. You never know. <laughs> there you go. Panthers at, like, plus 5,000 or 10,000 to win the Super Bowl. Free money. Just you, lock it in. Do you, guys, do you guys ever just take – Take your team, just oh yeah, just yeah, just because you have to, right? Like I feel sometimes, yeah, yeah. The the problem with me is I take BYU basketball to win the title every year. (laughs) BYU basketball at like plus ten thousand or five thousand every or plus seventy five hundred every year. In the era of COVID, who knows what happens? You know what I mean? Like everyone, I like COVID. I like BYU basketball. I like Mark Pope. I think they are. They could always go on a tournament run. I don't think they'll ever win the title, but. They just don't get the kind of recruits they should – They, with the honor code stuff. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're putting everything on the Niners this year. Yeah, always – yeah, it's so stupid. 
So. Yeah. Team in the league. Oh yeah, Pan- Panthers win the Super Bowl, the division, uh, NFC Championship. Uh, Darnold for MVP. No, I do have McCaffrey for MVP. I could think he could go off this year, but we did that yesterday. Let's move on to the Colts. There, once I mentioned uh, the books don't have their odds up right now. The Colts win total is at nine. Actually, uh, when I saw this, uh, let's see here, and it looks like Quentin Nelson and Carson Wentz will be back for week. Yeah, they were saying even though. Because you see, you got the notification like, wait, they're out four to twelve weeks. What does that even mean? Yeah, my my whole favorite thing about this Colts Carson Wentz dynamic was the trade because Philly, who hates Wentz, had to then root for Wentz to stay healthy and for the Colts to make the playoffs, knowing full well how much Philly fans wanted to boo him and hope that he never wins another game. And I just always think there's a bunch of Philly fans who just, <laughs> just like knowing full well that they, their biggest enemy that they have to root for him. It always cracks me up because Philly fans are just like just, <laughs> just the worst. But different breed, uh, uh, different breed, unbelievable breed. But I do so. I have the I have over. They're a really good team. They're just they're ba- I mean, the shittiest thing about this team is their receiving core, right? They and, yeah. they're, they're, and it's just that their receiving core, like Ty, is old. I don't know how he's still in the league, but. And you, I mean, you have Pittman, who's who's something, and then I don't know who the I don't remember who the other guy is, but at the at the end of the day, I think they're a good team. If and I think it really does depend because because uh, of Carson Wentz's his health, if he can stay healthy with Frank Reich, and Frank Reich's a modern, he coaches the football, the uh, he coaches the football, he coaches football in the modern era, the way it's supposed to be coached. He passes early on first down. He passes early. And that's what you need to win. And he puts it in Carson Wentz's hands. So I think it's over. So I had the Colts at nine and a half last time I looked. It doesn't change my answer. I'm going under here. I'm not a big Colts believer. Carson Wentz has always been pretty inconsistent, even in Philly. He does have better protection this year for Indianapolis, but this is the Colts' third new season in a row with a new starting quarterback. So, I mean, it's just it's too many question marks for me. They have a pretty good team around Wentz, but I just don't think – I can usually see them going eight and nine. Like, that, that seems reasonable to me. So I'm going under. That's a fair point. I think if Wentz stays healthy, they win the 10 wins. He's never stayed healthy. That's just the nature of it. So it's – and that's the issue with all these two. All these, like, eight to nine win teams, you're just like – I could see either one happening, like, no matter what. Like, the under – like, the teams that are, like, five, five and a half wins, you're like, oh, easy under. They want Sam Howell. Or the teams that are, like, 11, you're like, oh, they're going to be good. 12 wins. Yeah. Yeah. But these, like, nine, nine and a halves are tough. I don't know what to pick here because you because you guys flipped Connor. You went under. You went over, right, Brian? Yeah. yeah. It's tough. It's really difficult. I yeah, this was one of the harder ones. Yeah, because yeah, I think I, because people are like, oh, you know, their weapons are pretty solid. It's like, what weapons do they really have? It's like Mo Alley Cox is okay. Uh, T Y Hilton's, you know, randomly will have a few touchdown games in fantasy. I don't think Jonathan Taylor is going to be as good as people think he is. Honestly, that O line is good though. Yeah, that is true. He's going to have a lot of space to run, but I, I just don't see him. He's literally going like top five in fantasy. People are saying he's going to have like this crazy breakout year. He's going top know. five in fantasy. I think I he went what, like sixth or something in our league. I don't he, know. He, he's he went second round in our league. He is uh, he's Did rated he? as the seventh best player in fantasy. I think. Okay. Get out of here. I wish I, I am so horrible at fantasy. I just can't do it. <laughs> I'm just the worst at it. So I just draft. I just do. No one ever listens to ADP. Does anybody pay attention to ADP in your guys' league? Uh, uh, the people who don't pay attention that much. <laughs> it's probably not. They, I just, I've just never, every time I ever watch, like if you guys ever watch like Pat Mayo or whatever his name is, I don't know. I'm just no, horrible like, at fantasy. And like Matthew Barry is, is so overrated. Really? I agree. His videos are just, yeah. But, um, golly. All right, Carter, decision time. So it's at nine, right? We're doing nine? Sure, I'm still going under, though. Let's go under, because I think it's a push, but I'd rather, if I'm, I'm I, I'd am i rather bet my money that Wentz is not going to play the whole year. And I don't believe in Ellinger. And uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Eason from Washington. Is he oh, on yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't believe in either of those guys. I think they're going to be playing – quite a bit this year i think they're gonna i mean wentz is never gonna stay healthy that's just how it is that's fair as a as a wentz wagon supporter i'm on the wentz wagon uh it's it's very it's 
it's tough out here for Wentz guys. It really is because I can't, I can't defend how much he stinks when he stinks. And it was so clear when he was leaving Philly. I don't, I don't, I don't know how well he was liked in the locker room because I just think he was just a different, I think he's just a different guy. I think Indy is the perfect kind of city for what, uh, you know, Carson Wentz is all about. Philly ain't it. No. And then uh, with Carson Wentz too, I don't mean this, we keep talking about this, but it's important to bring up because just the NFL policy on it. We have no idea because he's not vaccinated, right? That's another thing you got to worry about too. And he doesn't stay healthy on the field. Who knows about off the field? Let's go with the Jaguars. They're over under win totals at six and a half. The unders at minus 134. Uh, They just lost Travis Etienne for the rest of the season. They bring in huge hire Urban Meyer. uh, And the savior of Jacksonville has arrived, Trevor Lawrence. I am so surprised it's at uh, 135 right now. It it is. I there's no way it's got, you just got to take under. I mean, have you? I don't know if they're. I mean, obviously they're just doing vanilla stuff because it's the preseason. But even then, it's still their vanilla stuff looks bad. And like you said, uh, ETN is out. There's no. There's just no way. Shout out to Gardner Minshew though. That guy, the dude's a boss. Well, I agree. Big Gardner Minshew got here. But I'm I'm agreeing with you, Brian. I'm going with the under here. Six and a half seems like a lot, especially for a team like this. They lost ETN. They have a very suspect offensive line. Trevor Lawrence might get killed this year. I just, I don't know. And I'm not, like, you know, Trevor Lawrence is fine. ACC, you know, he's fine. James Robinson's used to be in the Bill Kelback. They'll win a couple games. He'll have some highlights, but I have him going under here. Yeah, he's no Zach Wilson for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bold take. Oh, and I forgot to mention with the Jets, Zach Wilson 7-1 to one to win Rookie of the Year. I love it. Love it. I forgot. I had that, too. I have that, too. If you're going do- Trey Lance or Zach Wilson, it's going to be one of those two. I feel like you can't lose money going by one of those two. I don't think Trevor Lawrence will have that great of a year. I don't either. I think it'll be up and down. How do you guys feel about Irvin Meyer? That was a little surprising to me. I didn't see that coming. I don't like Trent Baki, uh, who used to be a Niners GM. Uh, So he just like the way he drafts, he just, I feel it, it seems as if, if a guy has a ACL injury, he takes him. So there's that whole component to it. I I don't know. I like I said, their offense looked pretty lame. So I don't know if I like the offensive coordinator. I don't know who the offensive coordinator is, but just like from the plays that I saw, I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like what was happening. And uh, but we'll see. I don't. I don't know. I'm still. I, I I do. I do believe in Urban Meyer. He can't be. He can't be uh, outdated by the time he gets to the NFL, right? Like that would be that would be a tragedy for for his coaching career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will say this about the Jags. I do think James Robson has a great chance to have a, like a statistically, statistic wise, great year. He had I wrote down, four, four or more receptions in eight of the 14 games he played last year. He's used to, you know, getting 20 carries a game. I think he can have a statistically good year, but I don't think that gets him any wins necessarily. Yeah. The only thing that I will say for the Jaguars is they do have kind of an easier division to play against, but. They do. I believe they have to play the NFC West, right? I don't. I'm not sure. I, I I, I'm not sure. Because if they have to play the NFC West, they're toast. They're not winning a single one of those games. See, this kind of goes off my point about the Colts under. I can see the Jaguars beating the Colts one game. I can. I can see that happening. Yeah, and that's a game like Colts will be like minus four and a half. People have them in a money line parlay and no, just screw. ruin everybody. Ruin Miles everybody. Jack will- Pick it like three times. Yeah, take it to the house. Yep, Carson. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah, that one's gonna be ugly. And like, for some reason, Trevor Lawrence will be out, and Gardner Minshew will come in and win the game for some reason. It'll be and gross for whatever reason. It's on Monday Night Football. On yeah, top of everything else. <laughs> I'm like, why no. am I watching this? <laughs> uh, I mean, they're they have a Thursday night game this year, right? One of their crappy Thursday games. I love those Thursday night division those, games. They're so those shitty. Thursday night Jags games are the best. Uh, yeah. Yes, they do play the NFC West. Oh, God. There's no it, way. Absolutely no. no way. They play the NFC West and the AFC East. That's going to be That's bad. That's tough. I'd be surprised if they win three games. Ooh. I can see them winning, yeah, four. Oh, gosh. We've, got a, we've got a classic Thursday night game this year. Jags-Bengals. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> September 30th. 
there's no doubt in my mind by that time there's gonna be like some stat or like big cat's gonna tweet yep. out barstool sp- that's over. that's when barstool sports advisors is at their best are these crap thursday night games like yeah uh just don't think just bet the over <laughs> yeah and you know what that works <laughs> like <laughs> i'm for sure gonna bet. i know for a fact on a jags Bengals thursday night game what's gonna get me going is like I, I I need him to score fifty two point. I need him to score forty nine points. Whatever. It probably will. Yeah, and it would be it'll be amazing. It'll feel like a win. All right, let's we're move all, on. We're all going under here. Yeah, I, I you, you just have to. It's hard not to. If Travis Etienne was playing, it would be a little bit easier. But they lose him. Their weapons are overrated. Yeah, Marvin Jones and Chark I think are overrated. No, eh. yeah, it doesn't do it for me. Let's move on to the Texans. This should be pretty easy. Uh, Over-under win totals at four and a half. Uh, They have the worst team in the NFL, I think. Uh, Under is the most hammered one. Uh, Under is the most hammered thing out of all these win totals at minus almost 170. The over is plus 135. The real question is, obviously, we don't know if Deshaun's playing, but who in their right mind is saying, you know what, I'm going to put my money on the over Texans four and a half? It's it, but that's what makes me wonder how it hasn't <laughs> been reset, how it hasn't been just like just two and a half to three and, and a half. half. Vegas knows make, what's up. The Vegas knows something. Vegas knows there's some guys out there who know. I but don't think it's, so. It's there's I don't think they're gonna win a game. A game. No, I I think they're gonna get one random one. Maybe, may I don't even think that because. The thing they is, look terrible. The one game thing, I think they can win one or two games, but they went four and twelve last year. And they should have had a pretty good year, and they were still yeah. went four and twelve. And if you look at the roster this year, they got some decent names: Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsay. They have a decent, like, n- notable names on the roster. But then you think about it, and you're like, they are washed up or had a shit year last Bra- year. Yeah, Brandon Cooks, Rex Burkhead. Yeah, I just sexy Rexy's there. I think he's on the team. Yeah, he's on the roster, and so I obviously go like, oh, oh, we might have to put the over. Sexy <laughs> only, Rexy, what a nickname. That's a great <laughs> only nickname. teams I have them beating, maybe that they have a chance against are the Jets and the Jaguars. That's the only way I can see them getting a win. And I don't even see those. Oh, of course Wait, not. I, I think those are gonna be like Jets. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Wait, what's the week one line with the Jags? No, Zach Wilson will not lose to the Texans quarter. Sorry. Zach, Zach Wilson will go 17 and 0, <laughs> and Billy That's... Football will con- convert to Mormonism. <laughs> Let's see here, because yeah, what, go ahead. What is the Zach Wilson? I'm just curious. What is the Zach Wilson? Because at this point, I feel yeah, I feel like you're leading. You're the leading. Bandwagon. I think he just you're does it just to, just to mess with me. I'm really not a Zach Wilson hater. I just like to mess around with Carter. Honestly, oh, okay. I love Zach Wilson. I've been on the Zach Wilson train very early on. Yeah, if he turns out to be like really good, Carter's been on it since the beginning. I will after say. after that BYU Navy game where they won 55-0 to open up college football last year, I've just been all on the Zach Wilson train. I couldn't believe what I saw last year. And they covered every single game besides the Coastal Carolina and UTSA. He, I genuinely think when I see him play, it's Aaron, it's, he's Aaron Rodgers. It's and amazing. It's, it's crazy. It's, it, and the Jets have him. And yeah. you couldn't ask for a better story than a, a city that breaks quarterbacks like no other than Zach Wilson. So, yeah, we have the – 84% of the money are on the Jags minus three week one against the Texans. I'm going to be glued. What's, what's the over-under on that? The over-under is 45. <sighs> I don't think leaning? it hits 45. I don't think it goes. Where are we through. leaning, boys? <laughs> under. You know, I hate taking the under, but that is an under game. Tyrod Taylor is not putting up more than 10 points. Like Tyrod Taylor is a classic. No more than 17. He's a 17 points cap kind of guy. With the turnover, though. That's with a yeah, turnover. Yeah, yeah. With a, with with no a huge turnover. He's a, he's a nine for 21 for 112 yards, 10 rushes for 41 yards, yeah. and an interception. <laughs> Harrison Hayes, if you're listening to this, sorry for the Tyrod Taylor. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, the Sharps have uh the Sharps have Houston. Really? That scares me. Not week one. They play them yeah. twice, right? I think the, week, week one, the Sharps have Houston plus three just because so much money is on the Jags. But I feel like I feel like Vegas lets the public win early in the NFL. Like the first two weeks, they let public wins. And then by like 
September, the end of September, they're just like, all right, let's take everybody's money. <laughs> That's the type of game where I, I, I wouldn't even know where to go. So I even I, like, that's the type of game that I wouldn't bet in October, but I'm week one for sure going to bet it week <laughs> one. Are you out of your mind? I may bet, I may bet the over and, and the, the uh, Texans to cover. It doesn't make any sense, but I'm willing to do it. And how do you not, how do you not want the over to hit the uh, betting the under really does genuinely stink. And you know yeah, what? It's, you can't it's enjoy all- the game. You sold me. I will. I will take a Brandon Cooks player prop. Sure, why not? You know, <laughs> Brandon Cooks to score the first touchdown plus fourteen hundred. Just lock it in. Lock it in. That's a lock. That's the lock of week one. <laughs> oh, hey, don't the Texans still have David Johnson? They do. Yes. How do they have three like Wash running backs? Lindsay, Mark Ingram, <laughs> David Johnson, Rex Burkhead. You look at those four running backs. You're like, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, in in twenty thirteen or in twenty fifteen. <laughs> You're just Honestly, you're yeah. running the ball every play. Also, is there never been a quicker fall from grace than David Johnson? Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley, but yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But David Johnson is up there, no question. Like two years. He let, let one he led the division, he led the league in rushing for two years, and then you never heard from him again. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. These running backs fall off so quick. Yeah. But uh wait, wait real fast. I have a question. Speaking of running backs falling quick. It, does that mean that Zeke? When 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 is Zeke falling from grace? When it because he's, I mean, besides Derrick Henry, right? He's the most popular. Am I am I wrong in saying he's, that he's the most popular running back? He's probably the most popular. Yeah, yeah. Is is this the last year where because he's gotten he's so much slower? Yeah, I think sure. we're gonna see a lot of Pollard. I think he has two more years, but I don't think how many years to the league. What's he been in the league? What four, five years? Yeah. Was he on that title team at Ohio State? Yes. Ah. He yeah, twenty sixteen. He was with he Cardell. Yeah. That is, that just seems crazy to think about. That pa- he, Pollard averaged more yards than him. Pollard's last good. Pollard's good. All right, let's move on. Uh, the last division, actually, and then at the end, let's get into some Week One lines. Just run through them. Uh, all right, we have the where is it? Okay, here we go. AFC West. West, it's a no-brainer that the Chiefs are going to walk through this division. Uh, they're the best team in football. The Chiefs are minus 305 to win the division. They might not win the most games uh, this year, but they're the best team in football, no matter how you put it. And they have the best coach in the league. I love Andy Reid. Uh, got my Hawaiian shirt just for him. Uh, yeah, the Chiefs shield. went – oh, the face shield. Oh, they don't have to wear masks, right? I don't think so. All right, sweet, because – I don't know. I miss the face shield. I'm going to miss the face shield. Him and Josh Pastor have a special place in my heart. <laughs> they looked amazing with oh. the mask and the face shield and then the holes. in Because the-, the, the mask would just like, he would be breathing and he would just be swallowing his mask. Yeah. It was yeah. amazing. But uh, the Chiefs win totals at 12 and a half and the overs minus 141, the unders plus 115. They're the most fun team to watch in football. I mean, if you have, if you're getting a player in fantasy, you're like, golly, I gotta have someone on the Chiefs. It's just too fun yeah. to have someone on there. And uh, their O line has improved. I think it's a young unit, but they have improved. Uh, what do y'all think? Yeah, they got Joe Tooney, Orlando Brown. I think the O line's better. I think Clyde Edwards Hilaire kind of. I think he'll have a great year this year. So I, so I love the Chiefs. Uh, unfortunately, they they uh, broke my heart when they beat the Niners, but things happen. And this is how great Patrick Mahomes is, is that even though I like, I hate the Ravens because they beat the Niners. I still genuinely love Patrick Mahomes. I watched the, the chiefs Rams game like a week ago, just, just because I was like, I need something to watch. And <laughs> that game was unbelievable. Best unbelievable. regular season football game there ever was. It's uh, it's just incredible, but there's no way that they the last since oh I got I got a I got a stat nugget for you guys. Uh in all of Andy Reed's eight seasons in the Reed regime, they've gone over their win totals every year. So eight years they've gone over their win totals every year. And they're the leaders in the in like like you know, pre-snap motion, play action. They do it all and they don't have to do it because Patrick Mahomes doesn't need that, but they still give it to him and they make Patrick Mahomes' life so easy. Uh, Andy Reid, my money is the best with Bill Belichick, the two best coaches in football. Yep. So there's no way that they don't they don't cover. The only, uh, there, there's no way they don't co- they don't cover, but they also just get bored. 
That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the only all. thing. It's it's like the Warriors. It's like those old Warriors teams. It's like, okay, are they going to get bored? Yeah, I agree. And the only real – it's not even really an issue, but the only thing I saw with the roster is they don't have a clear-cut second wide receiver behind Tyree Kill, but they already have Travis Kelsey, so it doesn't really matter. Sammy Watkins was hurt a lot of the time anyways. They got Hardman and DeMarcus Robinson, but – They're relying on those guys a little too much. I agree with that. I agree. And then those are the people that, like, you see with the free agency waiver wire on fantasy. You're like, oh, they're projected eight and a half. They could go off for, yeah, they could go off for a 70-yard touchdown. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I'm going over if I didn't already say it, over 12 and a half. Uh, eh, I'll be different. I'll go under. I think they go 12 and 5. Really? You guys both went over, right? Yeah. I got to be I got to choose something different. It's been too chalky here. I'll go under. Only reason I say that is I do think the Bills are going to be insane this year. I love the Bills this year. I think the AFC is a lot deeper. Uh, the argument for the Chiefs is they're just going to walk through their division besides the Chargers. I don't, and then, like, the Broncos game. The Broncos game is going to be frustrating because the Chiefs are going to be, like, minus five and a half in Denver. And for some reason, they're only going to win by four. They're only going to win by four. Quarter, it's going to be yep. close. Yeah, so and usually like, there's gonna be a moment where whoever's calling the play by play, if it's Rome or something, he's gonna he's gonna say something like, "God, don't you love Teddy Bridgewater? Like, <laughs> he, does, he does the right things. Look at that, checks down, steps up in the pocket, checks down. <laughs> it's just and then Teddy's yeah. burner clips it off and posts it on Twitter. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, Derek, yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, I'll go under. I think twelve and five. I mean, that's a terrible bet. I would never put my. I mean, if I'm betting it, I'm putting the over. But just yeah. to pick something different, let's go under. Uh, let's move on to the Los Angeles Chargers. Their win totals at nine. Uh, over is minus 129. The unders plus 105. Besides the Jets, they made the best offseason move by firing Anthony Lynn. Uh, what do y'all think? So, I, when Anthony Lynn, I, I couldn't stand as a, as a football coach, and it would drive me nuts that he would put uh, – the fact that Tyrod Taylor started that season when we watched what Justin Herbert did week one – was like, dude, were you ever out of practice? Did you ever <laughs> show up to a practice? Because that was that was ridiculous. And uh, I want to say over, but but I don't know, and I don't want to pu- I don't want to just push. I'm gonna say over, even though I feel like I'm taking all the overs. Um, I just so Joe Lombardi, who is now the offensive coordinator, was the offensive coordinator for the Saints. He's done it before. He knows how to. Uh, uh, create a, a versatile game plan, and now he's got somebody that can throw vertical more. Uh, and I and and Brandon Staley, I'm just a big believer in Brandon Staley and what he can do with the defense. He's got Joey Bosa, he's got Derwin James, he's got Asante Samuel Jr. He's got some guys, and he knows how to assemble a defense. He comes from the Vic Van, Vic Van Fangio school of uh, of defense, and that's basically the leading defensive school there is right now. So I'm I'm a believer that they can go over. I'm going to agree. We, we've been the same with a lot of these, and this one took me a minute to decide, but I'm going over nine as well. Losing Hunter Henry hurt, but they got Jared Cook. I think he's pretty solid. Justin Herbert, I think, will be pretty hot this year. He'll be – pause, but I think he'll, I think he'll <laughs> stay pretty hot this year. <laughs> we'll put that. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, anyways, Chargers to make the playoffs is at plus 130 right now. I don't think that's crazy. I personally wouldn't take it, but I thought it plus money. Like, that's not insane. I don't know. I love the Chargers this year. I love the Chargers. I'm all over this one. I think over nine, that's one of my favorite bets. I mean, I'm a sucker for good quarterback play. If you have a fun quarterback, I'm 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 sorry. I'm going to like your team. If you're fun to watch, I'm going to like your team. Uh, Rashawn Slater, I think, was a great draft pick. Uh, they need to improve that O-line. That will be their biggest question. Their defense can be remarkable if they're healthy. If their defense can stay healthy, they can be one of the best in the league, especially with Brandon Staley coming in. Uh, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, great weapons. Jared Cook's fine. He's not great. Probably on the downward uh, trend of his career. I He's love Chargers over nine. Okay. And so just... uh, and a long shot, I'll say it. I feel like uh, this is the my Chris Berman bet of the year. Chargers 33-1 to one to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's interesting. I thought you were gonna say Justin Herbert to uh, to lead the league in uh, uh, passing yards because I like that. But I don't oh, know I, what the odds. 
Oh, uh, let's look because I like that too. I like lo- love everything about the Chargers because this year. Even even when they were uh, playing under Anthony Lynn's conservative ass offense, ironically enough, he was the offensive coach, which threw just. I remember when they <clears throat> did the Monday night game against the Saints. I could not believe they were all, they were just throwing the ball downfield and they would score, and then they stopped throwing the ball downfield and they lost. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? But- Melvin Gordon needs his touches. <laughs> Yeah, Melvin Gordon. He was like Melvin Gordon needs his touches, nah. but I I just didn't. Uh, I just even with Anthony Lynn's dumbass offense, Justin Herbert was still throwing the ball deep downfield. He likes to push the ball deep downfield because he can, and there's just I just think that's that's a good bet. I don't know what the odds are on that. I hope it's, it's plus. It's twelve seven. to one. Twelve to one. Twelve that's to a, one. I love that. That's a great bet. I would. I would. I would take that. There's That's a fun a team to watch. Like Mike Williams will make some crazy plays. Keenan Allen is disgustingly good. Like, yeah, unbelievable. Best route runner in in the NFL, not named Julio Jones. I agree. Looks okay. like Jameis Winston is tenth on the list. Let's take in, that too. In most passing yards, twenty five hundred seems low for him. Yeah. What, what? about what about uh what about uh Ryan Fitzpatrick at sixty six hundred? For most, what, passing touchdowns? Yeah, I'm, I'm messing. Uh, no way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Maybe t- – I wouldn't hate Tannehill if they just start throwing the ball like crazy, but Derrick Henry's going to get the ball way too much for that to happen. I, I agree. I don't think that's possible. Okay, so you we got – everyone went over? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's move on. They just announced today Teddy Bridgewater – Teddy Tuglos is the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. Their win totals at eight and a half. Overs minus 125, the under is even money. Uh, Vegas Sharps apparently love the Broncos this year, like every year. It's a bunch of bull crap. Uh, Brian, you just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see how over it you are with the Broncos. It's awesome. I also genuinely don't like the Broncos as well. I think, I don't know if it's a uniform thing. I don't know what it is. I genuinely dislike them so much. They play the most boring football ever since they got rid of Peyton Manning um, or since he retired. But I think under, I'm just going to say under. Uh, I don't know if I like Vic Fangio as a head coach, but I do like him as a defensive coordinator. I, I don't. I definitely don't like Pat Shermer as an offensive coordinator, and I, and like maybe part of that is that he didn't doesn't trust Locke, and so. But Teddy Bridgewater is also conservative, so it's just a conservative ass team. And when you play conservative ass football, even if you're as talented as they are defensively and with receiver and um, and in the tight end position. You're still not going to – I don't think you're going to win over 10 games. I don't think you're going to win over nine. Whatever – what are they uh, – it's nine, right? Eight and a half. Eight, Eight and, and a half. half. I still – I'm staying – I'm taking under on that. I'm just taking under. I hate to keep saying the same thing, but I'm also taking the under here. I'm not a big Broncos believer. Not a big Teddy Two Gloves believer. I do love Javante Williams. I think he'll end the years the running back one over Melvin Gordon. I think he's been crazy. He's been – that clip of him blocking today was really impressive, I thought. That's all on Twitter. But the roster's pretty well-rounded. Like, Colton Sutton's going to have another breakout year, Pro Bowler. Von Miller, Valley Trouble on the defense. Like, they have a well-rounded roster, but it's just, you know, if your quarterback plays inconsistent, that really doesn't matter that much. I mean, I guess Blake Bortles, Bortles leading the Jaguars, I mean, an exception. But I just think the Broncos under eight and a half. I could not agree more. They're going to go eight and nine. I mean, I'll give them that. They w- they're going to go eight and nine. I f- is there a way we can bet the exact record? There, there probably is somewhere. Yeah, there's for sure. Is you can pick how many uh, wins and losses for sure. Eight and nine, sc- it just screams this Broncos team. I could see a seven and ten. Just eight and nine. They're gonna get these dumb wins. Just gross. They're gonna be the afternoon game when you're like you're depressed after the one o'clock games, and it's gonna they're gonna do that thing the NFL does, which is tragic. They'll do like nine one o'clock games and then two afternoon games, which is criminal. Sports criminal it's worse and it's the broncos the broncos are because they're a west coast team they're always or I, well technically a west coast team but they're always that four o'clock game in between a sunday night football game where i gotta like i gotta get some i gotta get some bets in just yeah to and make this. <laughs> like i and mentioned it's, before it's always wrong and you're it's, just picking and the wrong side and it sucks too yeah because i'm one i'm picking the wrong side on top of i'm trying to win my money back <laughs> because i bet <laughs> eight games I'm and chasing anyways. <laughs> it's one of those things where also if they have if they just went back to their uniforms from the 80s, I think I would be a Broncos fan. I think it, I think it's just their uniforms. 
That's yeah. what, that's that's what I realize right now. If the thing just... is, Teddy Bridgewater has awesome weapons with Jerry, like downfield weapons with Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, and he's not going to use them at all. It's just going to be checked down to Javante Williams and uh, Melvin Gordon and little like six yard slants for Noah Fant. I was going to say they still have Noah Fant. Yeah, he'll get the ball a lot, six seven yard catches. Yeah, hopefully the Teddy burner doesn't come after us. My goodness, he's yeah, going to find out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, they're the worst red zone team. I, I despise the Broncos. They're, they're, I hate teams that play boring in sports. I hate the Spurs. I hate Virginia basketball. I hate Ugh. the Broncos. Uh, soccer, I hate Burnley. When you just sit back and defend, it's miserable. Play a fun style and try and win that way. That's how Carolina men's soccer is, and it pains me to work some of those games. It's, uh, not to get too much into it, but it just hurts to watch. Yeah, I I hate boring sports. Uh, the Broncos are boring. Eight and nine screams them. Their Teddy Bridgewater is eight and nine. He's oh, if it was a sixteen game season, Teddy Bridgewater is the most eight and eight guy there ever was. Um, let's move on. Oh, and if oh, if you're the if you're a Broncos fan, just wait till you need have a two minute drive and you need Teddy Bridgewater to take you down the field. Just have fun with that one. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right, let's move on. Uh, the last team, actually, the Las Vegas Raiders. They're back in their new stadium with full fans. Uh, under is minus 115, over is minus 106. Win total is at seven. I love John Gruden. I am a huge John Gruden guy, but uh, I don't love this team. Do the impression. <laughs> you got I, I, my hair is messed up. I can't do it. Okay, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> fine, fine. I'll, I'll give you a pass today. So, I, Brian, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, nah, Brian, you got it. I, all, all, all I'm going to say is if you're the worst team in the division and the team above you is going to not win eight, I don't have you winning either. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, they're the worst team. They're the same yeah. team. Also, a fun fact, they haven't had a, a winning season. They've only had one winning season since 2003. Oh, my so gosh. Like they're eight, eight. They were eight and eight last year, and they were seven and nine this year, and that's who they are. And John Gruden is still going to be the coach there for another five years with Mike Mayock, which is ironic enough because Mike Mayock, you think there's been times where he's drafted really well and the team hasn't panned out. And then at the end of the day, it's still one of the, it's still so, it's still so strange to me that <laughs> I don't know. John Gruden's just, it's just, he might be just too old for the job. You know what I mean? It might just be yeah. a different time of football because they still have really good offensive line or they did. And I don't know. There's just no way that they're going to win more than eight games. Every year they overdraft like crazy for one player. They're like, oh, he was the third best O lineman on Alabama. He was uh, he had a third round grade. Let's take him twentieth. I don't know how they they took Henry Ruggs. I didn't understand that really. I still have this picture for my John Gruden. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh my! God. Tell you what, man. <laughs> um. All right. Knock on wood if you're with me. I like the under. I okay, good. Because I'm, I'm knocking going on wood. Pause, pause. Oh, uh, so Brian, you went under two. Yeah, I went under two. Okay, I'm switching it up. I'm going over. If Derek Carr does well this year, I think they went over seven. Although I will say, I don't understand the whole Kenny and Drake thing. He got 14 and a half million dollars over two years with a, like 11 of that guaranteed. You know, Josh Jacobs has been incredible, and then they go to spend 14 million dollars on a Kenny and Drake. That's the most that's, but that's what I'm saying. That's that archaic. That's the Raiders. That's the yeah, it's the Raiders. <laughs> I don't know. They upgraded their pass rush. Dare Waller is really a, like top. I do think Henry Ruggs has a big year. I, I agree. He has to have a breakout year, but I think they go over seven. I'm gonna be different over seven for the Raiders. It, but it, they do have talent, right? And I just, but I don't know. I I don't. Derek Carr's not that bad, but that's why they're they're a perfect. They they're a perfect seven and nine to to or seven and ten to eight and eleven i don't even know i can't the extra it's digit not. throws me off mathematically it'll take us about three years yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah yesterday i was trying my absolute best not to say the washington redskins i mean it was yeah. um, <laughs> so hard or the san diego chargers <laughs> <laughs> that's fair but yeah so i'm gonna be different to go over here uh i mean i i like the under i think they go six and eleven that just is what this yeah. team's gonna be but I love that stadium, man. I that's... just realized. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no, you. go ahead. I just realized I went chalk, and now I'm just, like, disappointed in myself. The whole way through. <laughs> Let's have some guts, B. 
Damn it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, you want to go through some, through some uh, week one lines now? Yeah. Uh, is there any future bets we like? I already gave all mine. Gave all yours. Uh, any player props or anything? Okay, let's go week one lines. Cool. We'll pull this up. All right, let's start off. Thursday night, Cowboys, Buccaneers. Buccaneers are minus seven and a half. The over under is 50 and a half. Is there anything we like in that game? I almost want to take the Bucks spread, honestly. I don't think the Cowboys will be that good week one. I don't think Dak goes insane week one. He'll take it some time to readjust. Is it, but isn't it seven and a half, right? Seven and a half. That's a so, lot. I know that's a lot, but it's and the we bet we talked about it yesterday. We're like, ah, they're gonna come out slow. Maybe I, just, I still think they win by 10 points. What's the over under 51? 50 and a half. 50 and a half. It feels like a 25, it feels like a 27 to 23 game. That's one of those, it'll be close where where you're gonna be sweating that out. I do I, I there's off the top, I think I would take the I take I take the Cowboys plus seven and a half. Like there's no way that's just a sucker bet though, it feels like, doesn't it? Yeah. You're just giving me too many points. Like it doesn't Yeah, if you if we went down to six and a half, I think I'd go Buccaneers. But once it gets past that football number, you're like, eh. like what do Fair. you I need a field goal on top of everything else? To, <laughs> yeah. Uh uh, 54% of the money's on the Buccaneers. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that includes teeter, teasers and then uh, 59% of bets are on the Buccaneers as well. So public likes the uh, Buccaneers. Let's move on to the Arizona Cardinals versus the Tennessee Titans. I mentioned this one earlier. I love the over at 51 and a half, even though it's a high total for a week one game. Titans are favored at home minus three and a half. I almost want to say Cardinals money line. Let's see here. I just, I, you know, if it's decent odds, I think Kyler is going to go off. DeAndre Hopkins, I, in the, I don't know. It's plus one thirty three. I definitely think Kyler's going to go off. I definitely really like the over because one, I don't know. There's just too much offense. I think for the Cardinals to stop the Titans and, and think, zero defense on each end. And yeah, so I think Kyler Murray is just going to run it. And once again, I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is a bad coach. I think he's a little under it. I think he's starting to become a little underrated right now. Um, So I'm, I I really like that over bet. I really do like that over bet. I don't know about the spread though. That's where it gets tricky for me. It's trying to handicap that game where you're like, "Mm, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think I would, I would lean uh, Arizona plus three and a half. I think I would too, but. This feels like a game, if one team gets out to a hot start, it's a live bet the other team kind of game. Like, you're like, okay, I can get Titans plus 10 and a half when they're down 14 right out of the gate. I don't hate that because any team can come back in this game within yeah. two and a half scores. Um, all right, let's move on. Jags, Texans, uh, it's moved to Jags minus two and a half. Over under is 45. Yeah, I don't – if I was if I was still gambling these days, I'm not taking a thing on this game. I'm sorry. Can't do it. I'm, I, I'm a sucker. I'm going Jags minus two and a half. I hate the Texans. I think they're terrible. But the I, thing is, it's that weird thing too because remember last year, week one, Jags beat the Colts. Bingo. Yeah. There's always one of those weird only games. Wins. That was their only win, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> they lost 15 games in a row. They lost 15 <laughs> games. It was incredible. I totally forgot about that. I remember watching that game and thinking, Gardner Minshew, huh? This is your time. How <laughs> stupid was I? I? I was like, they're competitive. Um, I'm going to take, yeah, Jags minus two. There's, you just can't take, I, the Texans are worse. And yeah. Tyrod Taylor is not going to. Urban both- Meyer is going to want to come out with a bang, too. What's the, what's the, what's the points line on that? What's the over under? 45. Just, ugh. That that's a Thursday night total. That's a Thursday night over yeah. under that you're just like, oh my gosh, like I'm picking the wrong side. That's a that's I'm I, that's one of those bets where I would take the under and I wouldn't like it. I yep. wouldn't like it, but I would. And, take and I wouldn't even like pay attention to the game since it's a one o'clock game. It's like okay, red zone, just don't show me that game. I don't want to. I don't want to see a play from that game. <laughs> that is uh, one of those moments when that game comes on when you hear Scott Hansen and then you're like, ah, oh, come on, man. 
That's <laughs> when you go and get up and go to the restroom or something. That's when you're just like, oh, and, and if you if you did have a, a bet on that game, you're just like, what's wrong with me, man? Like, <laughs> that's a, that's a <laughs> am I that much classic. Of a, you're that's just a you just looking at yourself like, oh my gosh, like what happened to me? I got issues. Also, that's a classic check Twitter game. Like that's a check Twitter moment. Like right, yeah, check Twitter. yeah, yeah. Um, let's do Chargers at the football team. Chargers are minus one and a half. Chargers are notoriously bad for one o'clock Eastern games. Uh, the over unders at forty four and a half. If I had to choose something in this game, I might take the over because that's a that's a really low number. I think the Chargers have a really good chance to put up some high points. And Fitzpatrick likes to throw the ball. I mean, they're going to compete. They have McLaurin and Antonio Gibson. I'm not going to say it's going to be a crazy shootout, but I think the over is pretty it's pretty enticing there. I'm very concerned that they that I want to lock in that over 44 so much. What's happening here that I'm not aware of? The football like, team's defense. Like I mentioned yesterday, they're going to be like that Bears playoff team where Mitch was winning games 17-13, 21-17. But 44 with the team that's going to pass. Oh, I guess, I mean, I guess it's the just Chargers. expecting the Chargers defense too. Yeah. It's just, they're expecting both defenses to, to re- in week one with not a lot of tape. 60% of money and bets are on the football team. And the under is at 60% too. That'll be a good game. I'm, yeah, I like the game. Chargers, man. I mean, I'm once again, I'm a slut for the Chargers. Like, you, <laughs> you have a good quarterback. I'm gonna. He, I love Justin Herbert, man. He throws the ball. He's so fun to watch. Um, yeah, I mean, but you never want to bet the Chargers coming to the East Coast. It, and but that's more of a Phil Rivers kind of thing. I don't know if that's necessarily Justin Herbert. The only thing I I think I like about that game is the over 44. I do think you're talking yeah. about you're talking about th- three scores each. Yeah, that's not crazy. I mean, it's 2021. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's move on. This is the bi- I think this is the biggest trap line of week 1. Vikings Bengals at the Bengals. Vikings are minus three and a half. over and under is 48. Oh, if you buy the half point and get it to Vikings minus three, that seems way too easy. Yes. Yeah, I mean, is Kirk Cousins going to come out there and just look like shit to start the year? Like, does, does Joe Burr going to go off to start? You know, is is this one of those? I, I think it's one of those great. It's uh, uh, Big Cat uh, sayings, which is like, don't overthink it. Like, yeah. don't overthink it. Bet the Vikings. Yeah. Like, I don't know. The Vikings are just a more talented team. So I, I I would just I would take the Vikings, and maybe I buy that half a point. Yeah, I think you'd have to. Uh, seventy seventy two percent of the money and bets are on the Vikings. Oh, I feel like an idiot now. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it says on the on action it says sharp money's on the Bengals at plus three and a half. <sighs> but why? What I, is? I know. Just it's, maybe that maybe a COVID thing. They're just anticipating a COVID thing. I don't even understand. But like that's just a game. You're like, okay, how did this not hit? Yeah. Yes. How did this not hit? You're just like, how did the Vikings lose this game? It, they're gonna lose on a game winning field goal. Some bull crap. Yeah. Uh. All right. Uh. Let's do Eagles Falcons. Falcons are minus three and a half at home. Over under is forty eight and a half. Uh. I don't want anything to do with this game. Me either. I was going to say the same thing. Don't know about the Eagles. Don't know about Jalen Hurts. Falcons. Ugh. Maybe I'd go Eagles plus three and a half. It's hard for me to bet on the Falcons after what I've seen the last couple of years. So I, I would stay away. Maybe I, an over. I So this game is, a, yeah, this game is a mess because I don't know where I would go, <laughs> but I know that I would buy a point. So 50% like of the point. money is on a uh, 50% of the money's on each team. <laughs> Perfect. So that's one of the that's one of those. No matter which one you choose, you're on the wrong side. Uh, I, I'm. I think I would take the Falcons over here, and, and the reasoning is I coaching. I'm gonna. I'm yep. gonna. I'm just gonna take the guy that actually played rock paper scissors over Zoom. That's not gonna cut it. That's not gonna cut it in the NFL. The guy that made Tannehill into a uh, into a really good quarterback or helped him like find his way. That's the guy I'm leaning towards. Yeah, I if I'm doing this, I just go over. The both defenses stink. Matt Ryan can throw the ball. I think 
I think we're going to see week one, Kyle Pitts goes off for like those classic rookie debuts, 170 yards, two touchdowns, like 10 receptions. Uh, I might take a player prop there. Let's do Jets at the Panthers. Panthers are minus four and a half over unders at 43. Ugh. I don't, you know, obviously we're Panthers guys. 43 is low, right? 43 is low as shit, but I still, I'm still not taking it. That game could be 14 to 10, honestly. <laughs> I don't think so. I think the Panthers score at least 20. You said we're what, four point favorites? Four and a half. It'll probably move down to four. <sighs> if I, I had to choose, I would take the Panthers spread. I'm taking that Panther spread. I don't know. I don't know what to expect from the Jets. That's a game. That's a game where you can't be blamed. You can't be blamed for taking the Panthers. No, no one should ever. No sharp. No one should take give you shit for taking the Panthers over the Jets. You can't be blamed for that. I can't be blamed for not for for not betting on the team that won two games mm-hmm. or who I don't even know how many games they covered. No way. And, and I take the Panthers. Four and a half said that weird spot where it's, you're not comfortable teasing it. Uh, if it was at like plus or if it was at minus three, maybe you could hop in on a teaser, get a little leverage on that. I would be okay teasing like the over and the or parlaying the over in the Panthers money line. I don't think that's a terrible bet. Four and a half feels weird. I feel like it's going to be a close game for no reason. Panthers just love close one. games. Just as week one, just because yeah. it's football. The NF, that's what that's what makes betting on the NFL better than anything else. Is because yeah. no, sometimes the NFL just says "fuck you, dude." Like whatever. <laughs> College dude, football incredible. does that too. Sometimes, holy smokes, man! <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's do Steelers Bills. Bills okay. at home minus seven over under fifteen and a half. Wait, can you say that again? Minus seven Bills. Minus seven Bills. I think I think that's that. I would go with the spread there. Also, this is a teaser kind of game. Yeah, I can see that too. But I think Josh Allen's gonna come out. Fire off, Stephon Diggs go off the Steelers. You're, you're telling me Bills minus one and Niners minus one on a teaser does not hit week one. Yes, yeah, not. There's no way. That's yeah. automatic. That's just a, club just an easy two team teaser. You're selling yeah, the teasers. I, I, yeah, the Bills are gonna. Uh, the Bills are gonna cover. The right, they have to. Let me see the percentage on this. This seems. I think they're gonna win by twenty. But the the NFL does the NFL like we just said the NFL does this thing where 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 they'll say to you, well you'll say how does that not, team not cover? Eighty three percent of the money is on Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Don't nope. ever think it. No, I'll I'll ever think that one. Eighty three percent of the money. These oh, books man. are making sure the Steelers cover plus seven somehow. That's yeah. if the if the three. if the. If the Steelers or manage to cover that game, I don't know. I <laughs> I don't know. I would be so furious. I would I would be. We're back. That's that's a we're back moment. <laughs> the Steelers covering. I mean, they could go zero and seventeen if you cover every game. That's all that matters. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good teams win. Great teams cover. Uh, right. Seahawks at the Colts. Uh, Seahawks minus two. We don't know the Colts situation really. Uh, over under is forty eight and a half. Is it in, 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 in Indianapolis, did you say? Yes, it is. And Seahawks are minus two. I still think the Seahawks win by more than two. Even if Carson Wentz plays. I don't think the Colts are, you know, it's not a crazy home field advantage. Carson Wentz is, even if he plays, he'll be mildly unhealthy anyway. So kind of be like rushed back. So I, I'm taking the Seahawks spread there. Yeah, I, I agree with Connor. I, I, I just feel like, plus they, they're saying that Russell Wilson's going to throw the ball more. Dome game, we all know. Yep. We all know. You know, quarterbacks love 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 a good dome. All oh, right, yeah, pause. I mean Seahawks. All I right, sure that was a pause moment. I was like, I didn't say. <laughs> Russell, Russell Wilson does love that dome. Russell Wilson loves dome. Quarterbacks love dome, guys. Facts, facts, facts. <laughs> uh, all right, let's you move know, on. Niners, couple- Niners at the lines. We'll just we'll just try and run through these real quick. Niners at the lines. Uh. Pl- Niners minus seven and a half at the lines over under 45 and a half. Uh, 70 percent. Oh, nope, 69 percent of the money's on the uh Niners. That's free money on the Niners. Lock it in. That's sexy. That's sexy. The Niners <laughs> are sexy. Pause. Also, I think they could cover the over by themselves. <laughs> you think I 45 and a half is a lot. 
with the Jets, it was 47, 48 yeah. Niners, and they and they covered. They covered. The Niners made sure that they covered. It was like 38 to 7. That's all I'm saying. Week one, I know it's crazy. I know I'm a Niners fan, so what I'm going to say, take it for a grain of salt. Yeah. Don't listen to me at all. But maybe no, that's I mean, you should listen to me. There's no way I can just be comfortable with myself. Be like, okay, let's go Lions. No, the Niners will win by at least 17, I think. It'll, it'll Niners are going to crush the Lions. And, yeah. and Nick Bosa, Nick Bosa back, D Ford on the other side. Jared Goff is going to be so confused. He's going to think Fred Warner's on his team. He's going to throw him the ball. <laughs> He's just going to keep scoring. It's going to be awesome. All right, Browns and Chiefs at the Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs are minus six, it looks like, on – sorry. Uh, minus six on here, minus six and a half on the Barstool Sportsbook. Over, under is 53. It's in Kansas City. Uh, 60% of the money's on KC. I always so want to take the Browns six and a half here. Connor, I couldn't agree more, and here's why. I didn't forget what you did to me, Kansas City. I didn't forget. <laughs> I did not forget. You took advantage of my love for Patrick Mahomes. You took advantage. They took complete advantage. And at a certain point, I started fading the Chiefs. And but it was it was too late. The the damage had been done. And I think the Browns cover. I, okay, she, Browns are, I, I, I don't know about this. I everybody's gonna cheat tease the Chiefs, aren't they? Yes. Probably. And, but the Browns are well equipped to handle a shootout. They can keep pace. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's a bet the over and have fun. Yeah, I agree. 53. That's a great call. Just, you know, Pat Mahomes, final scores like 31 28. 31 27, 31 28. Yeah. Yeah. Great game. Great game. Uh, okay. This is the worst game of the week. Broncos at the Giants. Broncos are minus two and a half. Uh, over under is 42 and a half. It's an afternoon game. Two, tw- uh, 425 kickoff. Ugh. I really I'm, couldn't hate this. I was going to say, I'm staying away. I really couldn't hate this game more. I genuinely am offended that the <laughs> NFL made this a game that we have to, that I have to gamble on in week one because <laughs> they know that I will gamble on it. <laughs> and I think it's one of those games. What's the, what's the over under again? Let's see here. 42? 42 and a half. Part of me wants to just, just as a fuck you, bet the under. And enjoy that. That's the only way you can enjoy this under is by <laughs> is by saying I will not want to watch you at all. Is there That's five the combined way. is there five combined interceptions in that game? That wouldn't shock me. In reality, I would never bet this game. No, 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 no. Five combined fumbles. I was gonna say uh, it, yeah, I'll Danny perfect. Jones and Turnovers. Teddy Bridgewater. Oh my goodness. Melvin yeah. Gordon might cough one up. Who knows? All right. Uh holy smokes. We have Packers at the Saints. Packers are minus two and a half. Uh, over under is 49 and a half. Why is this two and a half? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, first instincts Packers, obviously. Uh, and then this is why I was like, what the crap? 98% of the money is on the Packers. I still, there's no way. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams last two year. Two and a half. This si- Jameis Winston's going to go off, isn't he? This For is sure. Jameis Winston's going to go off this game. Packers are going to lose. If, is it? The Packers have good cornerbacks. They it ninety eight percent. It's but we but that's what the NFL does. Is it's you ninety eight percent is 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 the appropriate bet. But you're right. James Woods is going to go off, and somehow the Packers aren't going to cover. Or does that mean the Packers? That means the Packers lose. Yeah, Kamara has what five touchdowns, maybe Christmas Day again. Yeah, it's the James Dude. Winston game. What? They're, Mark with Callaway's their best receiver. Crazy. Yeah. Two and a half. Oh, gosh, that one. And I'm, you're, you can't just be like, you know what? Saints plus two and a half. What's the point of yeah, betting plus two and a half mean. ever in your life? If you bet the Saints and they and the Packers absolutely blow the Saints out of the water, you deserve to lose your money. Yeah, you're just going to, you're going to be. You're just you're just gonna watch the game and be like, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. That's one of those games where you think like, if if you lose on Packers minus two and a half, like what like what are you supposed to take? Who who in their right mind is gonna pick the the Saints unless they accidentally clicked it? All right, let's move on. Dolphins at the Patriots. Patriots are minus three and a half. 
Uh, Dolphins plus three and a half is minus 121. So I'm assuming that'll go back down to minus three for the Patriots. Over-unders at 44 and a half. Uh, that's an under. Yeah, I was going to say under, but like if I was gambling, unlike y'all, I won't be gambling on every single game in week one, personally. <laughs> so I, this would not Thoughts be a game prayers. Not. I didn't say I was. I mean, do what? I didn't, I I didn't say I didn't say I was going to do it, but uh, uh, never mind. Yeah, I don't well, know. Let, let's just see Sunday morning when I'm sweating out Liverpool versus Leeds. Then I'm just going to be like, all right, screw this. Leeds. There is no doubt in my mind. I'm going to bet every single game, and it's going to feel it's going to feel like Christmas. <laughs> I am not going to bet at all on <laughs> on this. Uh, the Patriots minus once that goes down to minus three, Patriots have to be the play here, right? Thanks, so, Sue. I mean that absolutely that just seems like a lock. That I think the Patriots are going to rock them. Uh, let's do Bears at the Rams. Uh, this is another game where everybody and their mother is going to have the Rams in a teaser. Bears plus seven at the Rams. Over unders forty five. Gross. Yeah, I don't. How, well, can we bet over? Two and a half interceptions. For is this an Andy Dalton? Is this an Andy Dalton fall apart game already? Can I? Is there a Bears score first Justin Fields? What's the odds? Because let's say Andy Dalton plays the first half and they do horrible, and then he's not making it. it to the third quarter. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't with Aaron Donald. He's not going to be able to get. He's not going to be able to get away. And then you have Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey that oh, that, that offensive ball. line. That's what I'm saying. What if it? I for fucking shits and giggles i'm i'm tossing justin fields to to score first touchdown for the bears yeah i can see that uh over under don't who cares like don't waste your just that's gonna be a chase game on sunday night uh all right last game of the week ravens at the raiders ravens are minus four and a half over unders 50 and a half first full stadium game at allegiant uh what do y'all think Four and a half, you said? Four and a half for the Ravens. I mean, my first instinct is to take the Ravens because the Raiders are not going to be any good. Their over-under was seven. I know I took the over on that, but the, the Ravens are going to be really good this year, and this is not going to be a game they lose, and I don't think it's going to be close. The Raiders plus four and a half just seems like – you know that, like, they – because they didn't do it this year. Those weird, like, early uh, – the first week they do those doubleheader Monday night games, it's usually, like, oh, yeah. Giants versus whoever, and then it's the Broncos game. And that la- that second game is always weird. It's, it's always ass. Yeah, it's always weird. I think Raiders plus four and a half just covers for no reason. It's it's going to be that first home game. That place is going to be rocking. That's rocking. the o- that's the only hesitation in its game one, and like that's the only hesitation. But at the same time, there, there's no <laughs> way that uh, the, I don't know. There's no way the Raiders win. It feels yeah, like. there's no way the Raiders win. But it's but it's the NFL. But yeah. What I'm saying is like, how are the? I don't just I don't even see the Raiders. I guess they're really talented. I don't know. You're starting to convince me on on the on the Raiders uh, being able to. We'll see how that. Sunday goes, oh, and stop, then stop, I, stop, yeah, yeah, let's let, the let's see how Sunday goes, and then I'll decide if I'm like, eh. I do like over fifty and a half though. I can yes. see that. Yeah, I I mean, I think it's just going to be points. Yeah, I think it's going to be twenty five twenty five. No, it'll probably. I think it's gonna be. I think it might be in the 30s. This is gonna be a high. Like a 31 to 24 Ravens. Uh, yeah, so like yeah, I like it. All right, well that does it. Anything else, guys? That's about it for me. Brian, that, thanks again for coming on, man. Oh, I was just gonna say, thank boys, thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. It's it's been it's been a blast. Anytime, you know, it's 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 a lot of fun talking to you guys. You guys know your shit. This is hey. a real deal. You guys are real deal. Appreciate it. I like the stat nuggets you give us. That's some Thank some you. good info. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah.